Hello and welcome back to Rolly's Wheels. Uh, we've not done any videos recently. Um, obviously this uh, COVID-19 lockdown has been a bit restrictive um, and we haven't been able to go anywhere uh, terribly far. Um, but today, uh, this might interest a lot of you who have got similar problems as I've experienced with, uh, with my Jaguar XJR308. Um, and that is to do with the radio cassette player, CD player. The main problems I'm experiencing at the moment is the uh, radio won't respond to changing a channel after about 10 minutes of driving the vehicle. Um, I can press all the different buttons on the front of it to change the channel, but it just doesn't respond. Um, and when I come to turn the unit off with the on off button, uh, it doesn't turn off. It'll just keep on, keep on working. Uh, even as far as to say, when I take the key out of the ignition, pull the key out, it should go dead. Whilst the radio seems to be off and well switched off, it leaves on the LCD display uh, an imprint of the radio channel that I've been watching, which is rather weird. Um, and doing some research um, tells me that it's something to do with the on off switch. So because of that, I have sourced a good second hand unit uh, from uh, a Jaguar parts specialist and I'll give you the details of that company after because I've had a really good service from them um, and there is a procedure I've got to go through to take the head unit out. So I was just telling you now about the head unit so the one I've got is the uh, the model which is the later version for the 308 which is year 2000 to 2002 stroke 2003 uh, the main differences are uh, on on appearance is you've got these these buttons here which the previous set doesn't have and a slight alteration very very slight difference uh, to the earlier one to this but um, this is the button that's giving me the problem the on off switch so I want to take this set out and uh, in order to do that um, I have to very carefully remove the gear selector surround um, I've got to pop it up I think it's clipped on either side um, and in order to do that, once I've clipped that up, um, I understand which I'm going to find when I take this off. There's uh, a bolt here, a bolt there, uh, a nut here, and there's a nut on the other side that's underneath there uh, to allow me to take the black surround which sits underneath the, uh, underneath this cover off. Um, and the two buttons here have connectors underneath which I've got to unplug. And when you've taken all those off, uh, you get to the ski slope, which is this uh, wooden surround. Um, and then uh, we should carefully be able to prise that out. And I'm told, and, and I've looked at this, there's a little flat lug underneath here. So I've got to very carefully lift the ski slope up and then out and away, I understand. But we're going to go through this procedure. Um, while I'm talking, um, the other little job I want to be able to do on this car is the cover on the ashtray, which I think a lot of people may have had problems with. I mean, I think it's come unhinged from, from this side here. So, you know, it's it's not working very well. It's it's wobbling and it's, well, sometimes gets stuck, but just flicks back. So I've got a, a replacement for this. Um, and in order to get to that, I've got to take all this sort of console out. So um, there are bolts underneath, um, underneath here and the, the corners here and here that I've got to undo. Um, and I've even got to, I understand, take the the uh, the screws out of the top of here uh, I think there's a couple more at the back there as well there's a phone underneath which I mean to disconnect with the little plug underneath so um, that I'm going to film on a on a separate occasion uh, because I want everything right with this car so I am now going to embark on the removal of the cassette radio head unit okay so I just applied underneath here and underneath here and underneath there and on this side so there's four locations in order to be able to just lift this up so you can actually just clips up and if you take a little look underneath you can actually see the little um, studs that actually sit inside those location points which are down inside there that's one hole that's another hole uh, that's another and another so when you're applying it up if you can just apply sort of in these locations here here and here and here and then the uh, the cover comes off 
So uh, now I'm going to go about undoing these. Just should be able to run those out with my fingers by now. That's actually too bad. A bit tight, but I've got big fingers, and these things are not only small, but you can see the uh, the size of it. It's actually got a, a wash on it as well. But on the seat, this next one. I think I'll have to undo that a little bit better with the bit more. And that comes out. Remember these are bolts and the bolts go on the back end of the selector. And then on the front ends you've got A little nuts. So, um, excuse me, the hand now to do this sort of uh, very carefully. And don't drop it down the side, otherwise, it may not come back very fiddly. But there we go. Let's put that on the side there. And then there's one more to do which is this one here, to undo that. I'm going to have to pull the gear selector back and um, instead of bringing it all the way back to drive, I'm going to sit it in neutral. Um, my car's parked on a, on a slope um, down into the water garage. So I've actually put blocks um, on the uh, wheels to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and my handbrake on, so um, make sure it didn't, doesn't wheel off anywhere. Uh, there's a nut, so there we go. Right, so now we've removed that, we should be able to lift. Oops, yes, it does, it comes up. And as I suspected, we've got the, um, if I just, can just angle this up a little bit, which I might be able to do. You can see those those plugs there that I was talking about, so I've got to undo those plugs. Um, I'm just going to have to um, pull the gear selector down into neutral position to be able to get this cover off and then unplug this. So uh, bear with me a minute. Okay, so what I've done, um, I've turned the ignition on, I've moved this gear lever into the neutral position. I was then able to overhook this and I've disconnected the blue and white. Now, Jaguar have very nicely made sure that you can't mix these up because the white plug goes inside the white socket and this one, this like a bluey color, black bluey color one goes into the blue socket. So you can't get them mixed up. So, I'm just going to put that just to one side. Okay, so now what we're going to do, uh, see whether the ski slope does come up. I'm going to have to move this um, um, gear lever back a little bit as well. This is a bit of a tricky one. I'm going to give a bit of a, a jiggle. I'm going to need two hands to do this. So bear with me. Okay, because there's a little bit of um, pressure because of the bending of it, um, as soon as you lift this up, it wants to sort of jump forward and it, it, a bit of restriction here. So you've got to very, very carefully lift it up. But now I'm going to have to move this gear selector back and uh, just see if I can get the, the, uh, the gear, the obviously the ski slope off. So just bear with me while I do this. Move this into reverse, put it down into neutral. There we go. 
So that's now off. Turn the uh, ignition back off again. Oh, there we are, we're in part now, so we can turn that back off again. Right, okay, so now we do have sight of, we've got a screw there, and um, there's another, another screw on this side, um, but I've got to take, I think, looking at the way this is, because of this surround, to get to the screws, to get to the set, I think with this one, I've got to undo this screw here, um, and undo that one, and undo that one as well, because I think the whole thing then is going to come out instead of the, the set coming out separately, which is what I'm going to attempt to do now. Okay, so now I've taken the screw out from the top, and from that left-hand side, and from the right-hand side. Now, just a word of warning, when you take the, the screw out of this hole, um, use a magnetic um, headed screwdriver because if the screw happens to drop it's going to drop down and it's going to drop down in here so do be careful so try and use a magnetic screwdriver they're phillips heads um so they're let's see if you can see these yeah the normal phillips heads so just a word of warning Okay, so with a bit of waggling around, very, very tight fit, um, I had to move this gear lever back into drive and then I had to literally waggle the unit out. It was a very tight fit between that side and this side. So you can see there's these lugs here and that on that side. So just be careful when you're taking the set out, you don't mark too much on the, on the side of the leather when you're putting it in. So you have to be very, very careful. And uh, obviously that's my... Um, air conditioning unit so hopefully everything will go back in there again so the next thing I've got to do because my new set that I have for the car um, it's not got that surround on it so we've got to put that plastic surround on it and see how I can manage to do it so yeah here's um, a bit of an advert now for the very kind gentleman who I got the who I got the um, set from um just with this now to set out oh, that's a new set it's a new set or replacement set got a bit of uh, cleaning up to do on that one um but yep there is a code that came with this radio as well which i've got um, but uh, the gentleman who I got it from, um, he is uh, Jaguar Parts Europe Limited. Um, so if in the UK, this guy is highly recommended. So yeah, so I've got to try and figure out how I'm going to get this surround um, onto this unit. So I'm going to have a little bit of a fiddle now and let's see what we can do. Right, so I've worked out how we can take the... Um, the plastic surround of this unit and it's quite clever actually because looking at the unit itself you see these clips one and two and actually close to look at them if you push them down push them in the plastic surround just slips back and then you can literally slide it off the back of the unit and then I can slide the new one in. So now I've managed to slide uh, very, very carefully, slide the uh, plastic cover up onto the new one. Just putting it through now. There we are, it just went click into place and those metal tabs have just clipped up. So yeah, it's, fitting quite well now so there we go so my now my surround is on the replacement radio so now I'm just gonna have to connect the the back of the unit up um, just a, a word of warning again I mean there's not much cable length to these um, but there is a, um, a series of cables here um, this black one went on to the 
onto the end of there. Um, there's a yellow one, which is this one. It's got one of those slide clips which goes up and back. So in order to take it off the back of the connection, what you've got to do is you've got to pinch the, the top of the little connector here, then that black lever comes right the way back and then you can release it off the back of the unit. So this is a bit difficult to, to do with one hand, but I'm just going to connect these back up into the unit. Um, and there's a white cable butter connectors as well, which goes into the, into the white, yellow into the yellow. And then not forgetting the good old um, aerial, which goes in this one here, that one. Right, so I've now put all the connections in place. Um, as I mentioned, this, when you're putting this back in again, make sure that this lever is all the way across to the back, push it in, and then you have to clip it up and then back over and make sure that that little yellow um, stay piece, it just clicks past it and then it's all locked into place. So, yep, then I've got the, uh, the aerial put into place and uh, all connections are in nice and tight. Now, we've got another bit of a job now to slot it back inside there. I mean, it was very, very tight for me. So I'm gonna have to move the gear lever back again into drive and then try and slot it in, in place. So fingers crossed, I'll do that. Okay, so that went better than I thought. Just a bit of a, a jiggery pokery to be able to slide it in. Um, and it's all sort of fitting okay. I've just got to put the screws back in this hole, got to line up. Um, and that screw's got to go back in there as well. Uh, and then I've got to put the, the screw back up here. So I'm going to do that next. And again, remember, when you're putting these screws in, and uh, the top ones, I've just put all these in. Just make sure you don't drop it and it goes down there. So what I did was, just to make double sure, I just put a, a rag to catch it, just in case it did drop down there. Because if it drops down there, you've lost it. So all that's done. So now my next job is to put the ski slope on. So I've now slipped in. So when you're putting it in, you're just gonna slide your finger around there and you're just gonna push it in, angle this down. Um, I've pulled the lever back, brought the ski slope down, and then I literally just clipped it in into this area here. So it's all fitting quite well now. So all I've got left to do, that does sit up a little bit, but it'll get pushed down when that's all fitting nice and trimly. So I've just got to, Connect these cables now into the little sport and um, cruise control button. So remember, the white goes into the white and the black goes into the black. So those fitted firmly into there. And then I'm just gonna pop that down. And then all it needs are the screws. No wonder they're quite long screws because it does go down quite a way. I'll just do that hand tight. And then put this one in here. Tighten it up with the with my ratchet in a minute. Um, now I've just got nuts to go on here. 
making sure you don't cross thread it. Just feed it on very, very carefully. Oops. I seem to remember watching somebody else do this and then it isn't as easy as you first of all think. Just make sure that is centered as well. The um, the black surrounds so don't go too tight until you've got the other one on. I'm going to change hands now for this. There we go. Right, that getting there now. All I need to do is use my ratchet socket and I'm not going to do it too tight either because I don't want to do any damage to the plastic. Just grab tight. See, my fingers now. There we go. That's quite nice. That's nice. And uh, as I said before, because this is a plastic surround, you don't want to have it too, too tight because you don't want to crack anything or split anything. As long as it's tight, it's not going to buzz or anything and rattle. And now all we need to do is to grab the surround over the top. And I do believe it should just click into place. push it to place, which it has quite nicely. And just push in that around these. They, they push in underneath as well. That's it. Nice snug fit. Okay. And as I say, looks like job is done. Um, this job for the ashtray looks a bit more complicated. So what I'm going to be doing is um, I note that to get the all the uh, center console area out uh, and because this ashtray uh, is fitted underneath all this has got to come out um, and the bolts holding this in are behind here and um, they're torque screws that I remember seeing one somewhere here and somewhere here um, so that's going to be a separate video so hopefully um, I'll be able to sort that one out as another problem get everything really spick and span because the car is looking great um i've got my headlining all done and completed uh the car is really in excellent shape inside so i just want it perfect um and uh you know as you're driving along it's a wonderful machine and there's going to be a few more items i'm going to be having done on this car which i'm going to do videos on so please uh, look out for my new videos um if i can kindly ask you to uh um, subscribe to my channel and watch for more videos on my lovely XJ308R. Thanks for watching.